Welcome back to How to Paint Digital Space Marine Gear in Part 2. Alright, uh, in Part 1 we went over like the basics on um, blacking out his shape and getting the, the background scene done. So let's jump into this. This actually might be a pretty long video, so let's get into it. Alright, so here is a sword that I had created before. Um, the video kind of jumped a bit. But this is the sword I had created after a while. I didn't like the, how the other sword was going at all. It just didn't seem right. So I had this idea. I wanted it to be kind of a triangle thing. So I created like this black silhouette. And now I'm touching it up. Uh, so right here, uh, a lot of man-made objects. They have uh, really sharp uh, edges. So you want to play with the the free transform and lasso tools and all the tools like that to get uh, sharp edges so right here I'm trying to define the light the lights come from kind of behind the sword but it's tilted downward so there's still some reflected light on it so you know I'm playing with a soft brush trying to get the right amount of light that I want um, here's an interesting brush that I had made a while ago it's kinda of like a chain brush um, not really chain but like um like a chainsaw, like the edges of a chainsaw. Um, so, uh, going to the lore of the Space Marines, they kind of have like these chain swords and stuff like this, and I wanted to incorporate that into my my painting. So I'm trying to f see how that's gonna fit all in there. Alright, so I turned off that layer for now, and now I'm trying to add like some small little highlights onto the sword. So what I did there was make like a small line with the with the um, the shape tool and uh, filled it in with white and I'm just going in there trying to add like these small little highlights that you would see on a sword and getting in there trying to just define it a little bit more yeah so in this phase we're gonna be covering uh some more of some more detailing process and this is gonna be a lot more detailing since most of the scene is already done and we're actually gonna get into color too so you get to see how I color this black and white image um, a lot of people even myself um, kind of it's kind of hard to go from a black and white image to color just because it's hard to figure out where to go from there, you know, like what do I do, what steps do I take to add color into the image. Um, but you see how that's accomplished. Um, as you look to your right hand side, you can see there's a lot of layers in this. Um, most of the time I try to keep my layers down, try not to use as many or as much. But um, in this type of drawing, I'm, I want to keep everything separate at least as much as I can just so I don't have to keep backing up a lot of opening opening um, previously saved files so I mean do whatever works for you uh, this is I normally don't do this many layers but uh, I just want to keep everything on a separate layer so if anything if I need to go back or change something uh, I don't have to go too far back into my save process I can just turn off the layer or delete the layer and be fine so right here I'm trying to create like some type of interesting belt. Um, I felt his torso area was a little too um a little too plain, you know, so I'm trying to figure out like what type what type of armor design I can use here. I decided I was gonna try to go with like this circle like emblem type thing. But um the bigger picture was not looking good. So I decided to delete those top and then just leave the circle one on the bottom. I'm trying to go in to define some of the, the lighting and how that's gonna fall on this cloth piece. So I'm just going in, adding some more darks. And defining his face a little bit more. Um yeah here I feel like the the face piece should be actually over his armor instead of under it 
it's actually part of the armor and it's not just like inside of it inside of his armor Here, right here, I just copied the sword, uh, copied it onto a new layer, added a blur to it, kind of a motion blur going at a diagonal, and I placed it behind the layer of the actual sword, um, just to give it like a, a sense of that he's moving the sword, or there's like some motion blur and the sword's moving in a certain direction. Still going in, defining a little bit of his knee, and I'm trying to play with like different armor designs. I don't know, to see what shapes or different silhouette I can make out of it. All right, so here is the technique that I use in many different videos. I go in there with uh, a gradient tool and just pick like two different colors. There's a brownish and an orange, and just you know added a gradient layer on top with overlay and I did the same thing for his armor added another layer on top used a blue color colored in his uh, his armor and turned the layer to overlay and here I'm trying to figure out um, certain color designs for his armor So I'm still trying to figure out where I want this lighting to come come from. Uh, I'm still trying to figure it out. So I'm gonna go back to that layer in a little bit, but I'm gonna define the face a little bit more just to make it pop some more from the actual whole image. Still playing with the the face mask. Um, from here, I, I kind of thought it was a good idea to keep this face mask, but uh, one of my friends was telling me uh, it's he's really not recognizable as Garen, or he just looks like a random uh, space marine. So, in the end, I ultimately changed it. So right here, yeah. So right here, I'm, uh, now I'm adding highlights to this kind of cloth piece that he has and adding some, some cloths just falling from his his elbow joint. And I'm trying to add some more dynamic lighting to the sword. Alright, right here, this brush is kind of a pretty interesting brush. What I did was take a square brush that you can find in Photoshop, and I went to texture, and added it like one of the texture, preset textures that they have on there, and, you know, I just gave it a swipe. It kind of gives an interesting effect. Maybe the sword is being corroded, or there's a lot of dirt and scraps on the sword, so, I mean, it's pretty interesting texture um, and it's it's pretty good to use on rocks too <laughs> so I'm adding some more debris and some more darks and lights alright so in here I'm still trying to define the lighting so I actually have two different layers with lighting for the background one using uh, radial lighting and one using a linear type of lighting And I'm just trying to get the right amount of red in this explosion area. <laughs> so I'm going underneath the previous layer and I'm trying to define. I got this pretty awesome idea that maybe since he's a space marine, he's in space on a planet. <laughs> and um, the explosion in the background is actually caused by these fighter jet things shooting down onto this desolate type of planet uh, and there's probably a good um, assortment of them they probably came to attack the planet so I mean it all kind of ties into with the space marine gearing type of thing 
So right here, I, I felt like the planet, or the moon in the back actually, was still kind of uh, faded and not as bright as I wanted it to be. I wanted to have like this, just the tip, or the, the side of the, the moon is illuminated. So it kind of draws your eye over there too. Alright, so felt like I had way too many layers and I decided to flatten the image and now I'm drawing on top of it adding in small little details um, everything is basically done with the overlay with color like the ground right here I added in a small patch of brown with overlay and then I created a new layer on top of that and now I'm actually painting into the image Continuously going in, I'm trying to add some uh, sharp edges. I want those planes to kind of stick out. I want your eye to kind of flow up his sword and into the planes. Right there, one of the best tools, the marquee tool. Go in there, select his leg, and you know, just kind of decrease the the brightness on it <laughs> just because the explosion is pretty bright itself so his leg is actually in front of the explosion so it's not going to be receiving as much light and here goes another interesting brush again square brush or shape dynamics and scattering set and you get this interesting uh, boxy type of thing I decided to play around with it. It seemed pretty interesting. And here I'm trying to come up with another uh, design for the cloth. Maybe it comes from his mouth and goes all the way into his belt, but I felt that didn't work at all. Uh, still trying to play around with different ideas, but I'm not liking how any of them went. So I'm going to go back, touch up the background. So it's good to add in like different color variations. To set off the red on the right hand side, I decided to use like a bluish, a cool calm blue since the red is really saturated. Um, one thing I've learned from doing us uh, studies is that um, anywhere in your painting, if you have like a dominant color such as red or orange or anything like that on one side of your painting, um, on the other side you want to use either a high saturation depending on how bright the dominant color is of an, of an alternate color on the other side just to uh, attract the eye a little bit right here trying to add some more grunge to the picture like I said the big challenge here for me was keeping the amount of energy going that I had from the beginning of the painting. I felt like when it was in thumbnail stage early on that the picture really generated this a lot of energy, you know? And I wanna keep I wanted to keep that, so that's kinda of the hard part here. It's just trying to make it seem finished but retain that energy. So now I'm going in with the chalk brush, my favorite brush in Photoshop, and just touching it up. Um, right there, I'd use the the marquee tool and created like a small little mountain range in the back, just to give the feel of more distance. I felt like the sword was a little too close to the to the moon in the back. It felt like they were on the same plane, in a sense. So adding those mountains in the back kind of gives it, or it kind of tricks the eye to seem like it was more in the distance. Alright, and right here, it's always good to make a black and white layer on top of your image. And just to see how your values are doing and to see if everything's falling in the correct foreground, midground, background. 
And one more thing that's also good that you've seen um, was that I had zoomed out completely, like all the way back, and then zoomed back in. Um, what I was doing there is just to see if it was working on a really small scale. If your image works really far, like if your image works when it's zoomed out and you can kind of tell what's going on, then you have a successful image. Because if it works on the small scale, it's going to work on the large scale. Still trying to get my value straight and flipping the, the image. Trying to find some more of these errors. Decided to add some some dirt in the foreground of the explosion. Just to give it some more depth. Alright, and going into the sword. Touching it up a bit more. <laughs> and right here is pretty interesting. Um, when I had finished the image for the night, I decided to um, leave some messages for myself, or some notes actually. Just some things that I had caught after I finished working on it for that night and um, it's kinda good to do that just so you know what your brain was thinking at that, at that moment and when you come back to it you know what you have to do uh, some of the messages that I had left was you know try to find an interesting armor design find out what I'm trying to do with this sword um, change the lighting uh, try to lead your eye Try to where you want to lead the eye, the viewers eye you know, some of the things you want to think about when you're doing an image, especially after you finish and you're kind of tired and you kind of see some things wrong with it, it's good to leave yourself some notes. When you come back to it with fresh eyes, then you see, oh, okay, now, now I know what I need to change. So, study going in there, trying to define this smoke cloud, trying to push the ships in the background, but not make them too too light. And again, here I'm going in with the moon. And I'm playing with the curves of the image, color balance. Trying to get that space marine feel. Here uh, in my reference folder, I found an image of like some moon rocks or Mars or something like that, and you know I wanted to incorporate some photo textures in my image, just so um, I can get some areas of high detail and some areas not, just so it helps lead the eye around, and you get some cool little uh, textures in the image. Alright, so um, this has come to an end. Uh, part 3 should be out soon too, uh, probably next week. Um, another thing, uh, there might be actually part 4 on this video too. It's pretty long. And um, be on the lookout. Remember to check out my blog, side, sidemessiahearts.tumblr.com. And uh, be on the lookout for part 3. Alright guys, thank you, bye.